My name is Nasi Gifted, engineer, educator, writer of an Afrofuturism series called PB Soldier. And you are now watching Brick by Brick, Behind the Creator. All right, everybody, I'm sitting here with Nasi Gifted, Brick by Brick, Behind the Creator series. Um, the first ever one. I'm really excited to have you, man. We're going to jump thank right you, into man. it. Hey, man, thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Of course. Definitely appreciate it. Of course, man. You know, before we get into it, you know, I want to just kind of pass him the ball um, and let him kind of speak on, you know, who he is, where he's from, and what we're going to be talking about today. So, you know, the floor is yours, man. Okay. Uh, well, everybody, um, just to let you know, peace, everybody. My name is Nasi Gifted. I'm a engineer, writer, creator of a, a Afrofuturism series called PB Soldier, also the founder of a festival called Kemp Comic Fest, where we celebrate black animation, gaming, and comic book creators. Cool. Um, this is an annual event that we do. Um, by day, I'm an educator. I'm a school administrator in the city of Newark. Yeah. Um, and at night, I, I write comics. That's what I do, man. That's, I like that's that. what I do. That's cool, man. You know, I did a little <laughs> bit of deep diving into the comic books myself, man, and looking at the different characters and the setup mm -hmm. and, and the storyline. Um, you know, just, before we even get into, you know, that whole part of it, you know, what made you kind of deep dive into the comic book space and, and what kind of made you, you know, get into that? Uh, well, when I first went into it, um, I mean, just just to give a, a little perspective, my, my origin story in this whole thing, right. you know, uh, in high school, I, I mean, not even high school, middle school, I, I used to collect comic books and everything. You know, I used to collect Spider-Man, Wolverine, X-Men, uh, and Black Panther. So okay. Those, those were like my titles. I didn't, I didn't really do any DC stuff. Yeah. Um, but those were, those were the things. And then, you know, basketball and girls, and I kind of put that to the side, but I was still interested in that genre. Uh, and with that, I, I, I kind of stayed on the animation side. So I still was interested. I still, you know, watched that anymore. Cartoons, did all of those different things. Yeah. And then I had children of my own. And the one thing that I noticed with the Saturday morning cartoons, with uh, the comic book industry in, in general, period, was there wasn't enough people that looked like us. Really? So it was a it was an issue of representation. It was enough. It wasn't enough diverse voices in there. So initially, I took my son to uh, see. I got a quick little story. I took my son to see uh, Incredible Hulk, mm -hmm. and uh, we started having this story, or uh, we had this dialogue about superheroes, this conversation. And I, I said the word superheroes, and you know, just from you know, from an education standpoint, words generate pictures, right? And when I asked him about superheroes, he would generate pictures of images of people who didn't look like him. So he would tell me, uh, when I said superhero, he would say Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. But on the forefront of his brain was not an individual who looked like him and being able to see that he is the hero. Right. So that was uh, something that I initially got upset about. And then I set out on a journey to do something about it. Hence, you know, started working on getting my own comic book series and developing my own story. No, that's cool, man. It's crazy because I remember growing up, uh, one of the first few black comics, you know, I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest of three. Okay. So, you know, I, I got I got a little bit of that old soul in me. But, you know, growing up looking at the comic book and superheroes, it was what, Blank Man? I don't oh, know yeah, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah Blank, Blank Man. Man. Let the lady go. <laughs> so, nah, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Like, that was one of the few things. And it's funny that, you know, they weren't ever prevalent as far as, you know, being DC, Marvel. It was kind of supposed to be funny. Humans. Yeah. It was never really yep. realistic, the comic book superheroes, people to look up to. So just deep diving in and further into that, how did your first attempt go making your comic book? More so, when did you try to make your first comic book? Oh man, yeah. so there's a lot of failures in this, uh, right. this whole journey. So, I mean, first, um, I didn't know nothing about the comic book industry. I mean, just my little background, I'm, I'm an engineer by trade. Right. So um, I come from the engineering industry and what we, the, the training that I would say that gave me intense skill sets to be able to help me get into this industry was the fact that we talk about problem solving. So I kind of broke it down. Um, I needed to know who was in the industry, right. what the industry was about. So I did a lot of research. I've gone to conventions and then I actually took a couple of courses. Uh, NYU. I went to NYU and I took, uh, you know, storyboarding and animatics. I took uh, how to write a comic book or graphic novel series. And then I did my own little self toy writing for comic books and everything like that, alongside of interviewing folks and, and all those things. So I had to deep dive into that and spend hours and hours upon writing. Initially, uh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know right. nothing about the industry. I didn't know what even a comic book script would look like. Uh, and, and they're just working alongside a, a, a group of other individuals who are already in the industry. Mm -hmm. I was able to, you know, work on my skill set, perfect it. Um, and then it actually worked to my family dynamics as well because I had two young children at home. 
I had a wife who was a flight attendant. And um, so I was in the house a lot. Right. So being that I was in the house a lot, all I did was write, write, write. That's all I kept doing was writing, writing, writing. And because I was writing, my earlier stuff, I, I'm gonna say it, it needed a lot of work. Right. <laughs> but I kept writing and kept adding on to the story. And then uh, once we got to a certain point, then I went back and kind of, you know, added some layers to the story writing because as I wrote more, I got better um, mm -hmm. at my writing. And, and then, you know, just gave it to, you know, other peers for review, you know, look for mentors and everything like that. And actually had to work on a couple of things, just uh, conceive, believe, achieve. That's like something in my, one of my concepts. Right. So you conceive it in your mind, believe it in your heart and achieve it with your hands. You know, you you, you have this thing where it's analysis paralysis. Like, so I, will, I wanted to make sure that we put out something that was market ready that if you put it up the next to the marvels the dc's right. the images that you're like oh i haven't seen this title before but it looked like so i didn't want it to look bootleg i didn't want it to look you know right. uh, uh second class or anything like that so you know we spent a lot of time with that but then you know we had to get to the point where we're like look we gotta put it out in the world and i just kind of think of that like even from an engineering standpoint as long as it does what it's supposed to do, like if you talk about your cell phone or anything like that, every so often you get an update. And that update is based on the feedback that you get from the consumers. So that's what we did. We put the book, we put the first book out and we, you know, we took the feedback and then we took the feedback and we embedded it into the second book. And then we just kept moving forward. And then based off of that, you know, like we came up with a, you know, a really solid product. Real, yeah, no, that's real. I, I, being a perfectionist, I think that's something that could be a disease, yeah. man. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, analysis paralysis. Yeah, that's man. Like, <laughs> you'd be stuck. You'd be like, man, I got this thing. It's right. sitting on the table, and you're just so afraid to put it out in the world because you're afraid of your own success or what other people may think. Right. Um, but as long as you, you know, you set your goal and, and put it and, and get it to a standard that you feel is ready for the world. Hey, you know, there's billions of people in the world. Somebody's gonna like it, somebody's not gonna like it. Yeah. And then you take that information and you help, you use that information to help you improve your product moving forward. I agree, I agree. So, I mean, you touched on a few parts that I wanna continue to talk on. You mm -hmm. talked about, you know, how you went through your trial and error. Yeah. Um, you know, you had some stories that you kept working on, you added detail, and then you even went to NYU and you met some mentors, but you know, do you have a set formula for anyone who's looking to develop a comic book? Let's say, you know, if you were speaking to someone, you know, within your school, right? You know, mm -hmm. and they came up to you and they say, you know what, I want to build a comic book and I want to create a comic book yep. just like you. What steps or what would you tell them to go do? Would you tell them to go? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a couple of things. Uh, you know, I, I have a master class that we will be doing. <laughs> later on. Um, but uh, the overview of that will be uh, when we talk about story, you know, designing a story, creating a, a fictional world or right. a world in general, um, and then the characters that's going to be in it. You know, like you have to see yourself with multiple personalities, right? Uh, and, and those multiple personalities are the interactions between the individuals that's in it. So one thing with a, a, a good story is conflict, you know, and we're not talking about that they have to be fist fighting conflict, but conflict in personalities, you know, sometimes polar opposites, you know, uh, because when we sit down, just like how me and you are sitting down, um, you have to imagine that conversation. And that conversation can't be all one way where you the yes man and I'm just saying everything. Right. But we have, you know, different personalities. And then that in itself um, creates climaxes and, and, and conflict in that because we have different views, um, different perspectives on how to go about doing something. So I'm about to give you some free game, right? right. So, uh, so our story formula is five parts. And the five parts is one, breathtaking characters. You got to have breathtaking characters that people could connect with. Right. Two, you want to have a, a real world scenario that's connected to it. So, you know, even though we're talking about fantasy fiction, sci-fi, whatever the case may be, you want to have some real world scenario that people could connect to and relate to as well. Then you also want to have a piece of history. We always want to connect a piece of history with our with our stories. We always connect a piece of history. Right. Then we, we put in a fictional setting. So the fictional setting, how this all plays out in that. And then the last component will be exceptional artwork. So exceptional artwork that people could connect with, ties in with the whole story. And then that's the formula of creating a uh, exceptional story that 
people, all types of people could connect with, regardless of, you know, race, gender, creed, any anything. Um, and that that's our story for them. And then we'll we'll be doing a master class on that, you know, how to how to take tackle each one of those little elements. Yeah, man. Y'all gotta tap into that, man. Yeah, if you really want to learn how to make a comic book, make sure you tap into that, man, because it actually helps me translate to the next question, right? Because now I'm gonna apply a little pressure on you and ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You know, are, is any of your works um, anything that's related to you personally, or is it connected to anybody that you know personally? Just deep diving is taking a step back, right, on mm -hmm. what you just said. How do you apply that to your comic uh, So, yes. So, uh, uh, the, the whole story fits that formula. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the things that uh, we did was the, the orig origin of PB Soldier was uh, was a clothing line. We had a clothing line when we was in college, me and a um, couple of my partners, mm -hmm. we had this clothing line and that was the logo. So we took the logo and, um, you know, we had this whole uh, clothing line with it and then developed it into a series later on. So we, we were all engineering majors and everything. You know, we was grinding hard, you know, like, you know, when you're starving, you, you know, you make things happen. Oh, you know. Um, but then probably heard the saying, like they, 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 they went in with guns and came out with jobs. Yeah. The revolution was over. That's kind of like what happened to us. So, you know, we all graduated, uh, you know, and, you know, we, we, we got those opportunities those opportunities were life changing for us because you know we were poor inner city kids yeah. uh, who got you know we were thousand years and you know in our early twenties and yeah. everything and, and that's life changing for you yeah. know an individual who who never really had much yeah, yeah. and uh, trying to keep that whole spirit alive pretty much uh, went into the lab and, and, and kind of started creating a story right. so with that you know it actually embeds our college my, my college friends. Uh, that the, the same individuals that we opened this uh, clothing line yeah. with um, took a real world scenario. So we took took Stop and Frisk, uh, the Patriot Act, and we ramped it up a little. So what would that look like in the hood if it was a worldwide campaign? Like, what would that look like? Right. And that's the whole political environment of PB Soldier. And that's where the Terrorist Act of 2011, which was the 10 year anniversary of 9-11, mm -hmm. um, happened and how we infused that into the story. And then how would that um, happen from a hood perspective? Right. You know, like what, 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 how would we interact with the people if there's a world government because they're looking to stop out terrorism worldwide? What does that look like? That's the political environment that you have within the pages of people. So that's cool, man. Because I think, you know, a lot of people from the outside looking in, they want to understand what we go through. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you making it relatable and digestible mm -hmm. in a comic book format, that's just definitely something that, you know, our culture needs. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know? I, I mean, uh, you know, our origins, we always told stories through pictures. And that was the hieroglyphs or Metanetta. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and those are all written on the walls of Egypt way back when. Because all comics are is pictures and words telling stories. You know, going to the origin, those were the first comics that were actually written on the walls of Egypt. And now being able to make that relatable to today's uh, individuals. Just talk about, you know, just trademarking and licensing and mm -hmm. publishing, right? I know nothing. I'm yes. like Ben Simmons, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Ben Simmons, I need help. You guys gotta help, you gotta help. Yeah. So how, how does that work? I know, you know, when you're starting off mm -hmm. and with anything, you know, you're passionate about it at first. Yep. You're naive, you're just doing it. Yep. You're doing it for the love and then, you know, that money aspect gets involved into it and then you realize, you know what, I want to be profitable with this. Mm -hmm. So. How does that work from a, 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 a trademarking licensing yeah, standpoint? Yeah, so, so your business is definitely, you wanna, you wanna handle your business first because right. uh, anyone can take your uh, IP, which is an intellectual property. Right. So to be able to protect it, you know, I know a lot of people who've heard of the poor man's copyright, yeah. where you take your, your intellectual property you put it in the envelope, mail it, mail it to yourself, you know, do all that stuff. Yeah, I did that as well because, you know, I wanted to, so I, you know, I wanted to double dip with that. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Right. Uh, so I have my manuscripts, my my characters, uh, my, my storylines that were written, all we from uh, 63 episodes of this whole storyline written. Nice. You know, so I have it laid out from front to back. Right. You know, like what the first side will look like, and then I got what the next side looks like. Right. So I did all of that. I did my characters. I had my my character designs, and then I uh, went to U.S. copyright and patent. Right. Uh, and and a lot of people don't know. I'm about to use the free game. It only costs thirty five dollars to do that. Really? Yeah, thirty five dollars. I was that. And the process is super simple. Uh, where you just upload it in files. So, and the, and the one good thing that you need to know is that once you do the process, you can dump everything into that. 
So if you, um, so I did my character files, my story files, my episodes that I had up until that point. And yeah. then of course I did the layouts of the, the preceding episodes that's gonna go after that. So if anyone kind of took my, well tried to take my story, I already kind of covered myself by putting all of that, by putting all those files into uh, my copyright uh, file when, when I filed it. And that was, uh, nine years ago, I did that nine years ago. But I knew where the story was going, so I just kept building on that, and I just kind of stuck to the format right. of what I initially laid out. Uh, that's dope, man. As you should, you gotta protect yourself. Man. Oh yeah, you definitely gotta protect yourself. And a lot of people think you need a lawyer and everything like that. Like I said, this is free game. A lot of the stuff will be in the master class that we're going to be doing later. That is thirty five dollars, man. Thirty five dollars. Yes, yes, sir. Just to talk about something fresh and something interesting, right? And something just the way the world is going. How do you plan on connecting or do you see any type of space to connect, you know, PV Soldier and, you know, NFTs or just integrating that into the blockchain space? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of really big and prevalent nowadays, especially with a lot of these artists and creators and even, you know, musicians and mm -hmm. I'm sure even publishers at yeah. a certain point are going to jump into that space um, just because of what you can do and leverage with that NFT itself. So do you see any space? you know, room for that? Do you have any capacity for that? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I definitely see room for that because um, it's all about intellectual property. So being able to take an intellectual property and put it on a blockchain, we talk about distribution. And the one thing that um, we do not own enough of, let me right. just say, because there's a couple of people that own, we don't own production. We talk about that. We talk about distribution. So for comics in particular, uh, Diamond was the gatekeeper. You know, in order for you to get into stores, you had to go through Diamond. Yep. And through, to go through Diamond, you had to go through this, you know, elaborate process and everything. But with the blockchain, that decentralizes that process as well. Right. And then being able to distribute it to anyone. So anyone in Africa, anyone in Europe, anyone in Asia can be able to purchase your, you know, intellectual property because it's on the blockchain and then making it readily available. So that is something that we are talking about. Cause we always talk about um, empowerment and legacy, you know, right. uh, and developing that. And I think, um, you know, just understanding technology, STEM, and just all, all of those things. I think that's a way to be able to empower, you know, um, the, the individuals to be able to create their own legacy and, and not have to uh, have to go through these gatekeepers or the individuals. Because even, even with the gatekeepers, there are um, avenues that you got to get through um, and sometimes they can block you. Yeah. You know, you know, depending on how much they like you or not like you, you know, the message that you were trying to convey. The blockchain allows you to be able to decentralize that and then be able to uh, put your intellectual property out there. So we are looking in 2022 to have uh, some NFTs um, aspects of the PB Soldier project that we do. No, that's huge, man. That's major. That's major. That's major. I think that's major. I think a lot of these NFTs Nowadays, they don't really provide much value, so we're going to see a lot of them fall off. But, you know, this avenue, and especially the way you're talking, I think a lot of people would want to gravitate to that because you can provide some type of uh, utility or service to them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. And, you know, just speaking on that and, and just speaking on NFTs, like, you know, how do you plan to expand this bigger than just comic books, right? I know we kind of talk about the NFT space, but I kind of wanted to figure out, mm -hmm. you know, do you have a, a different segment within media yeah. that you want to kind of take this into maybe movies i don't know yeah so yeah. i mean transmedia is with, with all of this stuff we want to do but um the project is the the next level of this project is animation we want to do an animated series with this um and then have that available you know uh worldwide uh when we initially started writing the project it was envisioned that it would be an animated series because we wrote it in episode as half an hour episodes as if i was watching saturday morning cartoons again or something we're using this project as a way to introduce um, young people to STEM. We want to get them excited. We want to get them inspired to, you know, pursue these STEM fields that provide a number of opportunities, the largest growth market, you know, throughout. Uh, just introducing characters that are doing things that are out of the ordinary. You know, most people want to be rappers or basketball players or, or you know, any other type of entertainer. But you can't all be professional in, in sports or, you know, music or anything like that. But everyone can be professionals in STEM. Right. And, and, and carve their own niche in their own space for that. So being able to introduce those complex topics in, uh, in a comic or in animation to be able to uh, get those um, young people inspired to be able to think that they can do that as well. So, you know, I know we talked about, you know, being able to branch out and tackle different avenues, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as the, the brand itself goes, any any ventures you're looking at or any partnerships you're looking at making in the future going down the line? And if so, why? 
You know, like mm-hmm. what, what's 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 the goal, and, and what what do you see that that you think you can generate? So, so one of the um, partnerships that we're definitely looking to do uh, is, of course, uh, we're doing we're looking to do more stuff with blockchain and mm-hmm. NFTs. One of the major things that we're looking to do is we're looking to partner with STEM organizations nice. um, because being that our whole mission is to kind of introduce uh, different ways to make STEM exciting. We're looking to partner with those. We have identified a number of STEM organizations because they just kind of fit naturally into what we're doing. You know, we're talking about engineering, we're talking about computer science, uh, you know, all all levels of uh, art and animation and everything. So being able to partner with those individuals uh, to be able to not only make that that connection with what we're doing with the project, but to show that there's um, different opportunities out there available because you're interested interested in animation, game development, and uh, comic books. Right. So, I mean, there's so many avenues, especially with STEM, and you try to make the connection. So just, you know, your your process in general and how that went about when it comes from just the illustrations mm-hmm. to, you know, maybe storyline writing. Um, can you just tell me a little bit more about how that process worked for you as far as creating the comic book mm-hmm. and then having to do the storyline yourself and then having to figure out maybe the brick and mortar publishing distribution spots, yeah. you know, looking up in the area, I'm, you know. Well, for, for yeah. the story writing piece, you know, I, I gotta give you some more free game, you know, <laughs> you know like, like you gonna be tapping me out in a minute. You know, I, I had nothing for the master class. But uh, I mean, one of the things, you know, especially from a story writing standpoint, um, I learned this from a, a, a award-winning author is, uh, especially when you're writing, you're writing a, um, you're writing a comic, you're writing a screenplay, uh, you, you're doing any type of uh, work, you know, um, it's, it's about writing one page, right? And, it, and taking that one page and write one page per day, setting the goal to write one page per day. Most people, they, you know, they, they try to tap themselves out. Like I'm gonna do 20 pages in a day, I'm gonna do eight pages in a day. Yeah. If you write one page a day and you do the math on it, if you're writing a screenplay, which is generally two hours, mm-hmm. uh, that's 120 pages generally. Right. So that's 120 days. If you do one page a day, you, you'll have a screenplay in uh, 120 days. That means you can write two screenplays in a year. Uh, depending on the deadlines that you are, you know, you might have to, you know, up that up. But if you just kind of focus in on, you know, you're doing your projects and everything. Now, if you're writing a novel or anything like that, you know, general novels, 200 to 300 and something pages, you know, you write a page a day, you get 365 days in a year, you you have a novel at the end of the year. So, you know, those are just what, you know, real simple ways to be able to kind of tap into that. Uh, and be able to do that. Um, and I know there was another aspect of the question that I'm not um, addressing right now. No, I think, you know, what I was asking was that part, but I also wanted to kind of speak on like, you know, the illustration part and, mm-hmm. you know, that process and how you yeah. went about that too as well. Like, um, I just kind of wanted to know what did it look like when you sat down at your desk for the first time to kind of potentially maybe even draw or write the story, you know, yep. how, how did you do that? If, uh, so, well, I, I started jotting down some ideas on paper. Yeah. That's, that's what happened. So I, I started writing out ideas on paper and then I started flushing it out further and further um, until I actually got a story. And then once I got a story, I started right. seeing images in my head nice. and then it just started flowing. And then um, from that point, I worked with my artist to be able to you know, make these uh, things that I put on paper real. Um, I'm, I'm not an artist. And right. when I'm saying I'm not an artist, I'm not an illustrator, I'm a visual artist. Uh, so when I do write scripts, I do provide images and everything for the artist that I work with, who's uh, Abel Garcia, um, to, to be able to create what you see, you know, in, in the uh, graphic novel and everything. Right. No, I think that's pretty cool because a lot of people probably think and assume, oh, if I got to do the comic, I got to do all of it. You know, the, I have to be, you know, the, the estimate in every single part of it, mm-hmm. the subject matter expert when it comes to the drawing. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But maybe you have to, but maybe you don't have to be the guy who's, you know, yeah. actually rolling up his sleeve. I mean, and, and the thing is, is, is like knowledge is power. So uh, part of my research, and you do this for any industry that you enter in, you need to know what's the aspects of the job that you need to be able to do. And as an entrepreneur, you got to wear all of those hats. Right. But as an entrepreneur, you also the manager of those uh, um, those tasks and everything too. So some things in, uh, that you want to learn, you know, as you go through your journey is like what I'm really good at and then what I need to outsource to someone else to be able to accomplish. Because I knew 
the level of artwork that I wanted to, to depict in the story, mm -hmm. I couldn't do. You know, like I would have needed another five to six, seven years of training to be able to get to that level. Right. I didn't have seven years of time to be able to perfect my my um, artistry work, my graphic design work right. to, uh, to be able to do that. So uh, I worked and partnered with someone to be able to do that. Right, okay, no, that, that, that's cool, man. I mean, you know, we talked about all that and I kind of wanted to kind of start to, to, to wind down and, you know, take enough of your time here. But before we transition into the next segment, which is going to be the fun part of the segment, we're going to play a little game. We're not seeing before he let him go. I think, you know, he gave us his time today and, you know, we want to leave in good spirits. But anything you want to tell the people that maybe I didn't kind of ask you and you feel like you think it should have been addressed, you know, I'm only one side of the, the, the conversation. I definitely would love to hear what you think should be said to the people. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. just, just I, and uh, the thing that I like to talk about is just from a business perspective, you know, you may have an interest, you may have an industry that you want to penetrate, you know, there's always a conference, uh, a convention that's attached to that. Find what that conference is. That's that's one of the main things that you need to do. These are like the points for regardless of what business you're going to. Find a conference, go to those conferences, leverage that, understand, Find the uh, the top five in that industry, right? You want to find the top five people with the top five companies and know what and do a case study on them. What do they do? What do they do really well? How do they put the stuff out there? Because uh, Harvard Business School puts out case studies on just about every um, all these industry leaders. Yeah. You need to take that information and, and that information is generally like fifteen twenty dollars at most. Yeah. But that's the education that you need to get in order to know what the big people are doing so you can do it and then know what you do well. Because in any industry, any company that you're developing, there is certain levels and certain positions that you do. As an entrepreneur, you may have to wear all of those hats in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. You know, you need to have knowledge of that, right? But you don't need to be the expert. You know, you surround yourself with individuals and you partner with individuals that can do those things at a high, high level. And that is uh, something that you need to be able to do um, in order to be successful in regardless of what industry that you're in. And the last piece is get a mentor. Anything that you're looking to do, you know, there's somebody who's doing it and you want to tap into them and tap into their brain. You know, you don't want to, you know, reinvent the wheel. Everything that you that you are looking to do has been done by someone, but of course you probably have a vision to be able to modify, build, test, modify on a, on a higher, higher level. And that's what you do. So you take that information and then you put your own brand on it. I think that's some good tips as far as the conference, you know, it's something as little as that can slip your mind and you just don't mm -hmm. think about that when you're in your process. But I know that you have something that you work on every year, mm -hmm. the Kemp Fest. Um, and you know, it could be a good opportunity for someone who wants to be involved in the comic book okay. space to come visit. I know you have some notable names there over the past year. Um, do you want to just give some people an idea to feel what happens there or what, what goes oh, yeah. on so, yeah, so at conference? Kim Fest is our annual uh, festival that we host uh, where we celebrate black animation, mm -hmm. game developers, or game or gamers and uh, comic book creators. We're going into our eighth year uh, nice. with this. Uh, but this is the nexus of uh, where the, the creators of today meets the creators of tomorrow. So we want to be able to inspire that next generation of creators. So those who are interested in developing their own comic book series or developing their own game or, or uh, developing their own animation, that is something that we wanted to create for people to be able to showcase mm -hmm. and also develop a training grounds for individuals so they can uh, actually do what um, other, others um, are currently doing. Right, yeah. Always got to pass the knowledge on all. So, you know, we talked about mentors too. Okay. And before we let it go, you know, I want you to just give the people your information on how they can find you if they want to reach out to you oh, and yeah, continue this combo. So, if you're looking to contact me, uh, my, my Facebook is Nasi Gifted. Um, Instagram is Director Gifted, mm -hmm. you know, at Director Gifted. Uh, all the other social medias will be PBS Media Studios mm -hmm. and PB Soldier, at PB Soldier. That's on all of the platforms Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. It's at, at PB Soldier, at um, PBS Media Studios. Yeah, definitely check him out and get you right, man. <laughs> and he's going to be announcing those master classes soon. I advise you to take it. We didn't have a long time, but we definitely got some good information in the segment. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. We're going to play a game. Real simple game. We're gonna play a game called uh, The Choice Is Yours. And how this game goes is basically, we'll ask you a question. If you feel like you need to explain, you can, but you get to make a choice and the choice is yours. And okay. it's all gonna be kind of simple related to comics and, and gaming and everything. So okay. Marvel or DC? 
Marvel. Okay. I'm so, a big DC guy, but I know why you would pick Marvel. Maybe. No, no, Marvel. No, Marvel Comics is uh, what got me into the industry, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what I used to read when I was a kid. You know? uh, the movies aspect of it is that's I, I think Marvel is superior in that aspect. Yeah. Animation wise, it's DC hands down. You know, so that's <laughs> so if I look at it from that standpoint, you know, Marvel movies um, and, and the comics. That's because that's what I used to read. Right. Um, and then uh, DC for animation, animation, hands down, they, they, they got it on Smash. Yeah, man, that, dude, that uh, last Justice League movie got me, man. I really like that one. So, Spider-Man or Iron Man? Uh, Spider-Man. Okay, Deadpool, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm kidding. No, 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 Spider-Man was, uh, Sp Spider-Man was one of the titles that I used to collect. Um, so, Todd McFarlane, who, you know, did a phenomenal job. He's the individual who created Spawn and everything like that. He was the artist when I first got introduced into uh, Spider-Man. And, you know, the way he did the webs and all that stuff, yeah. and then kind of, uh, they went with the story direction. That kind of made me gravitate to that title. Um, oh, it's a good one. Deadpool or Wolverine? Wolverine. I respect it. Wolverine. Deadpool. He's cool. Deadpool, <laughs> Deadpool is cool. And, and it's funny, I got introduced to that character through kids. So, you know, I work in the school system and they, they talk about Deadpool, Deadpool, Deadpool. Right. Wolverine was just like, yo, he just, his personality, you know, like, uh, he, he, he's just the best dude who ever do it. You know, yeah, right? Lone so, Wolf, man. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I, I liked him on all aspects and all levels. Okay, next one is Hawk or Thor? Oh, oh, Incredible Hawk. Yeah, Hawk. Yeah, Incredible oh, Hawk. Um, I would say Hawk. You say Hawk over Thor? I like Thor, man. Yeah, I, I, I like, see, the, the whole Avengers squad was like the B-list movie. <laughs> like growing up, they was the, that was the whole B-list. Cause, yeah. Cause what, in the 90s or in the late 80s, it was X-Men, it was Fantastic Four, and it was Spider-Man. Right. Like those were, the, those were the titles for Marvel and everything. Right. Avengers, nobody really, you know, they, so they, they knew came. about it. Marvel sold them off. They was hoes, so they sold them off. Yeah, they, sold, they sold off their top line, so that's why Sony and everybody else got they now they just reacquiring those properties. Wow. So they had to go with the B-list crew, which was the Avengers. I mean, and the way the spin that they did, they made them top of the line. Like everyone knows about them. But yeah. nobody knew about Iron Man and they 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 knew the characters, but they weren't they weren't the uh, top echelon of, of Marvel titles and everything. Even when you look at sales and everything, it was Spider Man, it was X Men, and it was Fantastic Four. Those were the three. Those were the three. And then everybody else who were connected to those worlds. But the Avengers was like Spider Man was here, X Men was here, Spider uh, Avengers was down here. You know, wow. you know, back then. Um, but for this new generation. They don't know about the X-Men. They don't know about Spider-Man like that. They think Spider-Man was part of the Avengers. Right. Thing like that. But Spider-Man was standalone, the most popular character out there, you know, next to Superman, Batman, and everybody That's else. That's crazy. That's crazy, because you know what, man? I, I feel like the Fantastic Four, don't, they don't get, they just do. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it, just yeah. because of how 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 un how poorly they did the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think that's how people <laughs> judge them. Yeah, know? yeah. Like, but from the comic book world, they were you know like that, that's where you got your Doctor Dooms and everybody else that was connected to those universes and everything. And that's just a history lesson. Like, yeah, now we that, need that. That's a, we that, need that was a history. <laughs> but for the new generation, Avengers is top of the line. Like, cause yeah. you know, cause they they did twelve they did a twelve year run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of people don't know when they started with Iron Man. And then they then they rolled into Captain America, Thor. Uh, then they did Ant Man, and then they did all of the Avengers. That was all twelve, you know, twelve years, and they've been doing that whole thing. So those yeah. are all the B list that that they said, yo, we got do we got these properties because Marvel got a ton of characters, so they took their B list. Disney owns Marvel, you know. Disney is a, a is his own conglomerate. You yeah, know? yeah. They helped to acquire back their properties because they were in financial woes when they started selling off all their property. That's why the Spider-Man series looked different because they were uh, licensed to Sony. Right. Uh, Incredible Hawk was also licensed to Sony. Fantastic Four was licensed to Fox. Mm -hmm. So Fox had that property and yep. everything. And that's why the X-Men uh, and all of them was all with Fox. So that's what that series was. Right. And that's why it all looked distinctly different from what Marvel was doing because the Marvel movies that you see now with um, Iron Man and all that, all of that was when Disney had the property. Yeah. And, and you know, and uh, you know, they put the Disney, they put the Disney spin on it, and now you know, uh, those are billion dollar franchises in each one, on each level. Yeah, they about to they about to do their thing with uh, the Black Widow and everything, man. That's gonna yeah. be cool, man. Let me yeah. let me ask you. So this is gonna be a tough one. This is they, 
Batman or Captain America? Oh, I'm Batman. All You're Batman day. too? <laughs> yeah, I respect all it. Day. All day. <laughs> uh, Magneto or Professor X? I like both of them, but uh, Mag Magneto. They was friends too, man. Yeah, they, they was friends. Like, yeah, they was friends. Like, I, I, I like Magneto. I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Magneto. Yeah, uh, his powers. Uh, that the whole thing with the the whole plot from X Men you know, seems like it was the civil rights struggle. You know, mm -hmm. like when you talk about um, philosophy wise, where Magneto was supposed to be Malcolm, and then uh, Professor X was supposed to be Martin. Yeah. You know, um, but Magneto. I'm yeah, Magneto. for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Superman or Invincible? I guess the people want to know. Superman oh, like, or Invincible? Invincible. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm, you know what? Invincible. I, I watched that series. That, that I, I like that. That's like, like one of my new favorite animations right now. Like, um, but as far as the characters, yeah. I might I might have to go with the Man of Steel because yeah. you know he got that seventy five year long, long yeah, catalog. Man. Yeah. You know, uh, so I've been following him for much longer. You know, Invincible might be that next guy for me. You mm -hmm. know, but I know that when that next series come out, I'm definitely I'm definitely watching. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, I gotta catch up on that, man. Gotta sit down. There. Catch up. Harley Quinn or Catwoman? Harley Quinn. She's funny. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Dr. Octopus or Green Goblin? Dr. Octopus, because he's a scientist, I guess. I don't know. I'm ready. <laughs> Watch this one. Y'all ready for this one? PB Soldier or Black Panther? Oh, man. You know I'm going with the <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to it. I'm going with the soldier. <laughs> now, we talking about in, in a fight, who will win? Wow. If we talking about in a fight, who will win? I, I, I have to go with Black Panther. You know, he. You know, he, he took that heart-shaped herb. Yeah. You know, Peter Soldier ain't got no powers like that or whatever. He, Not yet. He, he ain't gonna be able to think, he, he, he ain't gonna be able to think his way out of that one, but the claws is gonna get him. <laughs> and the vibranium, you know, he got that, that vibranium suit. It's hey, gonna man. cut through his little armor, like, real quick. So. Hey, man, I might, uh, might get some creative <laughs> juices. We might get those creative juices flowing now. PB Soldier might come back for the rep. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we're on this last question, guys. This is gonna be a good one. Before we wrap this up, can you name five black superheroes? Oh, five black? Oh, man. Uh, black Lightning, uh, okay. Luke Cage, okay. uh, Storm. Okay. Uh, ooh, Bumble, um, yeah, her name is Bumblebee. Bumblebee, um, Jason, PB Soldier. This uh, guy, oh, uh, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I got to throw all of them in there. Yeah, too. you should. That's yeah, five and, right there. You and, and, so, um, shoot, uh, Super Sketch Painter. Um, yeah, man. Corporate, uh, you know, I can start naming all the independents now. <laughs> Uh, Tuskegee Airs and you yeah. know, throwing them all out there. Oh man, he got them all, man. He, <laughs> he could have just named the comic book, man. But no, nah, man, I really do appreciate you coming out here, no, man. Thank man. you, thank you, us thank you, for having you man. Me. You let us ask you all these questions, man, and you know, hopefully, you know, next time we meet up, you know, we all accomplish great things, and and we'll be there. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm looking forward to it, man. My man. <laughs> <laughs>